Well, HIV is interesting because what it does is attack the immune system. So the immune system then becomes compromised and it can no longer fight off the infection. Now the HIV virus infects two main types of cells. It infects circulating T lymphocytes, which travel around in the blood and can enter the tissues. But it also infects a cell type called the macrophage, which is an immune cell that lives in the tissues. Now T cells are generally short-lived and they can get infected and then they can die, but they pass on the virus before that happens. But the macrophages, they get infected and they survive. So we were more interested in studying the macrophages in the brain tissue specifically, and those cells are called microglia. So what we did was we have the tissue and we look for specific markers in the brain. And what I mean by markers is a protein that is expressed in the cells in the brain. And what we wanted to do was compare those markers between the control brains and the HIV brains. And we looked for a couple of different markers. One of the markers we looked for was the HIV protein. And one of these HIV proteins, called P24, is only present in the HIV encephalitic brains, meaning the brains that have um, inflammation due to the virus. Even people with HIV that do not have the inflammation they don't have this protein because the virus is not actively reproducing in the brain. So we found that we have three groups of brains actually. The normal brains that don't have the virus at all. The brains that have virus in the body but hasn't entered the brain. And the brains that have the inflammation due to the virus in the brain. So we have these three categories. And what we found is that most of the time, and what we found is that most of the time, the HIV uh, brains that have virus but no inflammation, they appear more like normal brain as opposed to the inflammation brain, the brain with inflammation. So we looked for some specific markers along with the viral protein. We looked for a marker for cell death and we looked for a marker for prol proliferation of cells. Now, when cells are responding to a pathogen, which is a disease-causing organism, such as a virus, they might start to grow a lot to try to attack the virus. But what we found was that when the virus infected these cells, the cells that were infected were not able to reproduce. So that was one interesting finding. Another interesting finding is that when there's a lot of inflammation going on, there's a lot of turnover of cells, and they will often die um, after they've completed their job. We found that the cells that were infected do not die as readily as cells that are uninfected. So we have this interesting puzzle. The virus infects cells, and the ones that are infected, they don't die, and they don't reproduce. So they're pretty much staying around as viral factories, which from the virus's perspective is great. So those are our main findings recently. And so, um